We, co we have conducted this study because LCIS, or lobular carcinoma in situ, remains a, a clinical problem for us because it's a pre-invasive lesion that confers a risk, an increased risk of breast cancer development, but molecular predictors that can tell us which patients are likely to develop breast cancer after the, a diagnosis of LCIS is still a challenge. The second point is that LCIS has a dual nature. It's both a risk indicator and also a non-obligate precursor uh, of invasive breast cancer, in particular of invasive lobular carcinomas. And understanding how these lesions progress from in situ to invasive remains a, a, a biological and clinical challenge. That, that's a, a very important question. One of the reasons for us to be interested in carrying out the study is that there's so little uh, information about the repertoire of somatic mutations in LCIS. And the reason for that is exactly how to have access to materials that can be used for that type of study. So what we did actually was to tap into a prospective collection of patients undergoing prophylactic or therapeutic mastectomies that had a diagnosis of LCIS. And this was done by Terry King, one of the major collaborators in this study. And over the years, we were able to have access to that material, everything frozen, so that we had sufficient DNA of sufficient quality to do the genomic analyses that we performed. Um, these patients were all had a prior diagnosis of LCIS or invasive cancer. So we, in, in this particular population, we're not talking about the incidental type of LCIS. So it's LCIS associated with some more advanced lesions. Well, a massively parallel sequencing now is available in most of the large cancer centers in this country and in Europe as well. Um, I think the biggest challenge was not the technology itself, but the analysis methods. The, uh, the analysis methods that uh, uh, are available um, help us a lot in terms of defining the repertoire of mutations in a cancer, but to understand the clonal compositions of lesions and to understand progression from one lesion to another, these methods are not really readily available. So we had to come up with uh, methods to combine algorithms that are currently available so that we could interrogate the data in a meaningful way. Um, so that was one of the uh, most exciting parts of the study as well from a, from a methodological perspective. And to see that using those approaches that actually are available in the literature, we could answer questions for which we did not have answers before. Uh, first, what we observed was that LCIS is a genetically advanced lesion, in a way akin to invasive breast cancers of luminal A subtype or invasive lobular carcinomas. So they have a uh, median number of some uh, non-synonymous somatic mutations, meaning mutations that change the amino acid structure of a, a protein coding gene of 21 per case, which is similar to what we see in invasive lobular carcinomas or luminal A invasive breast cancers. So that's one of the major findings. The second major finding is that these lesions, uh, over 70% harbor mutations affecting the e-cadherin gene, which is called CDH1, leading to complete inactivation of that gene. So a genotypic, phenotypic correlation. The third point is that LCIS is clonally related to ductal carcinoma in situ or to invasive lobular carcinoma in a large proportion of cases, suggesting that is a, a non-obligate precursor of, of DCIS and invasive breast cancer. And the final point that we observed, as I mentioned before, using those combinations of bioinformatics algorithms, uh, that in the progression from LCIS to invasive breast cancer, there is clonal selection. And the Mutational processes that result in that clonal selection seem to differ from the mutational processes that gave rise to the LCIS in the first place. Meaning that if you are to develop a biomarker for LCIS using the average of the transcriptomic profile, or the gene expression profile, or the um, mutational repertoire of LCIS may not suffice for us to understand which ones are likely to progress. The take-home message here is that 
we have to stop thinking about LCS as merely a risk indicator. We have to accept that it's also a direct, non-obligate precursor of both DCIS and invasive lobular carcinomas. And that actually should um, help motivate us to understand how we can use chemo prevention uh, effectively for patients with LCS to prevent progression. The second point is, is that our results should also motivate the whole community to uh, invest in methods to try and identify which LCIS lesions are likely to progress and which ones are just you know, self-limited. They will never progress to invasive breast cancer.